We are in the west of Western Australia, an arid, sparsely populated region known for its vast mineral deposits, particularly iron. This 2.4 kilometer long train, 1.5 miles, is transporting ore from one of the 16 mines it operates to four ports on the coast, more than 400 kilometers away, 250 miles, to then be exported to the rest of the world, mainly to Asia. But the curious thing is that it is running by itself, without a driver. It's no wonder they call it the world's largest robot. Without any operator, it travels from one of the ports to one of the mines. An operator then takes over during the loading process. It is then put back into autonomous mode and returns to the port, where an operator takes control again in the final stage. And the loading and unloading process is also fully automated, despite having an operator present. These trains belong to the mining company Rio Tinto, the second largest in the world, and are part of the auto haul project that began operating in 2018. It was developed in partnership with Hitachi Rail STS, which created the world's first fully autonomous long-distance heavy haul rail system. By 2020, it already had 221 autonomous locomotives, with tracks covering more than 1,900 kilometers, 1180 miles. In conventional locomotives, regardless of how many there are in a train composition, all are controlled by a crew in the lead unit. This is because they are connected by control electrical cables and brake pneumatic hoses. If there is any locomotive at the rear or in the middle of the train, it is controlled via radio. In the case of this autonomous train, there are no crew members in the locomotives or remotely operating them. All are controlled remotely by a computer algorithm. You can identify when it is operating autonomously by the two blue lights that are on. Each locomotive is equipped with several safety components, such as alarms, collision detection, and an onboard camera system for real-time monitoring. There is also the Autonomous Train Protection System, which manages the train across the entire network and ensures it follows the predetermined rules set by the control system at the operations center 1,500 kilometers away, 930 miles. What the system does is replicate the operation of the company's best train drivers and then apply small improvements to each route, using information from the train and the railway network's topography. This made it possible, for example, to increase the average speed by 6% and improve fuel consumption efficiency. This raises the discussion about workers training the algorithm that will eventually replace them. But, according to the company, they offer new roles and qualifications for the displaced employees. In addition to the labor costs associated with the crew, every time one of these 30,000 ton trains has to stop for a crew change, there is a significant delay in the operation. On a 40 hour round trip, the three to four crew changes would represent a one hour delay, which translates to a considerable cost in an operation of this magnitude. In addition to the cost and inconvenience of transporting these crews to the trains in the middle of the journey, which used to reach 1.5 million kilometers per year of car travel, 800,000 miles, Another point is safety. Automated processes tend to be much safer because they eliminate human error from the operation and remove people from hazardous areas. And automation is more easily implemented in a controlled environment like this. But of course, accidents can still happen. In June 2023, an autonomous train operated by Rio Tinto, carrying 30 cars of iron ore, derailed due to a track failure in a section that had undergone maintenance, not being the fault of the autonomous system. In February 2024, another autonomous train derailed. In May 2024, an autonomous train collided with parked cars from another train that was being rescued for repair. In no case were there any injuries. One of the benefits of automation since there are no people on site. They also have greater efficiency, productivity, and reduced costs with operators. So from the company's perspective, it's basically a situation where there's no reason not to automate. All of this reminds me of what happened in the United States. There was a law from 1937, dating back to the era of steam locomotives, that required having a driver and a fireman. Fast forward to 1947, the law remained the same, but now in an era where diesel locomotives were already in widespread use. The trains were enormous, with multiple locomotives, and it was already possible to connect and operate them solely from the frontmost locomotive. Imagine the cost of having to staff a team on each locomotive when the technology already existed to operate with just one. Eventually, they legally began to consider all the locomotives in the train as a single unit, meaning multiple crews were no longer needed. There is always some resistance and a period of adjustment when a new technology changes the current landscape so significantly. Rio Tinto also has over 130 autonomous trucks operating in its mines since 2018. The system, equipped with artificial intelligence, uses predefined GPS routes to navigate and receives the locations, speeds, and directions of all vehicles in real time. It also collects data from vehicle sensors that continuously map the terrain, people, and objects. In 2018 alone, each truck operated an average of 700 more hours than a conventional truck, resulting in fewer interruptions and a 15% reduction in costs. Additionally, Rio Tinto has 40 autonomous drill rigs, the largest fleet in the world. A single operator remotely plans the activities for an entire shift. 
Autonomous trucks then load the drilled holes with explosives, calculating the exact amount needed for each hole, minimizing waste. It might seem counterintuitive to see an industry like mining being so automated, while in urban centers we still don't have autonomous cars or trucks in widespread use. However, industries are usually the first to be automated. Since it is a highly controlled area, automation becomes easier. In this case, besides being a remote region, the entire railway is private, operated solely by Rio Tinto, despite crossing 42 public roads. Also, activities involving machinery, vehicles, and personnel are all pre-planned. An urban environment, on the other hand, has many more variables to consider, with more possible routes, more vehicles with unplanned routes and pedestrian traffic. In the case of subways, the environment is also more controlled, which is why some are already operating autonomously. Another point, in the case of industries like Rio Tinto, is the substantial financial value associated with the activities these machines perform, providing a quick financial return. I hope you enjoyed learning about some of the world's largest robots. They are massive machines with state-of-the-art technology, and if someone ever talks to you about a ghost train, maybe it's just autonomous. Thank you for your company, and until next time.